Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here, and today the age of the submarine is over. For today, update 13.1 goes live, and with it, a whole host of changes to submarines and ASW, along with the Lunar New Year event, the return of airship escort, and several other additions and changes to the game. And that's what we are going to be going over in today's video. If you do find this video informational, entertaining, or just downright helpful, make sure you drop a like and leave a comment. Helps on the YouTube side of things. And subscribe while you're down there. Why don't you? But we're going to be going through the update notes for today's video. If you have a particular portion of the update you'd like to know more about, check out the timeline down below. Chapter should be set up so you can go straight to where you want to get to in the video. But let's go ahead and get on into it. Link to this article will be in the description as well. So if you want to read along as I read aloud or read the article in full, which I do encourage you guys to do, check that link out. All right, so let's get going. So they say update 13.1 delivers the following submarine ASW update, changes to the exterior system, lunar new year, airship escort, early access to U.S. aircraft carriers continues. Uh, brawls, clan battles, the armory, the creator verse, game balance change, and a couple other additions as well. But of course, the main thing most of you are here for are the submarine and ASW updates. So they say, as we have announced previously, we are working on solving major problems with submarine interactions, and we are now ready to share some details about changes to the submarines in ASW and update 13.1. With these changes, we aim to create more consistent interactions between submarines and surface ships, while still maintaining the current level of combat effectiveness of submarines. First, we are making a few changes to surface ships ASW. Depth charges are being replaced with depth charge airstrikes for the Hindenburg and the Venezia branches, with the exception of the Monticello at Tier 5 in the Italian branch, as well as for the Prince Eugen and the Schroeder. We are also increasing the depth charge airstrike range for tier 5 and tier 7 battleships. Depth charge airstrike for tier 5 to tier 7 battleships and cruisers will have a shorter cooldown. Additionally, for tier 5 and tier 6 battleships and cruisers, the bomb damage will be slightly reduced. This means that you will be able to use depth charge airstrike more often, but with a lower damage per output per attack, so it should balance out. Ships that currently have special ASW settings will not receive any changes unless specially noted. Uh, depth charge airstrikes range will be increased for the Ohio, the Thunderer, and the Jean Bar, and Jean Bar B. It will become similar to the ranges for those other battleships at their tiers, so rip the Massachusetts. The Venezia, Zal, and Yodo branches will receive the submarine surveillance consumable in a separate slot. As for submarine changes, the hydrophone consumable now works differently. The consumable will allow submarines to immediately highlight ships in range regardless of terrain, similar to the hydroacoustic search and surveillance radar. The consumable can be activated in any state, but it will only reveal ships that are at periscope depth or on the surface. When submarines use hydrophone to reveal ships above them and in their line of sight, static silhouettes of these ships will appear for a short period of about 6 seconds and then disappear. Ships behind terrain will be indicated as a short flash, flash without a silhouette. They include a couple of gifs of that happening here. So before we go any further, um, big ups, big ups so far for these changes. Of course, the addition of the depth charge airstrike for the Hindenburg Venezia branches, as well as the Eugen and the Schroeder are big pickups. I mean, it's a pain in a heavy cruiser to try to run down a submarine right and then, you know, sail over them and drop depth charges on top of them. Uh, DDs, of course, are faster, more nimble. That's a different story. But for heavy cruisers, expecting to do that is just absolutely uh, miserable. So what is uh, of most important um, change to us is that the Venezia is on the Yodo branches getting the submarine surveillance consumable. I believe the Commonwealth cruisers are getting this as well. If not, please correct me down below. I mean, it would make sense since you know most of those ships did take part in the Battle of the Atlantic. So the fact that these cruisers are going to have the submarine surveillance consumable is a big pickup. That means you have surface ships that can, when they go, hey, I think there's a submarine nearby, smack that button and then be able to detect them. Uh, they don't go into too much detail about how it will exactly work, if it has the same, what does it have, like a three or four minute cooldown at the start of the match, or if it's going to be loaded up right away, I doubt that very seriously. And what exactly, you know, what range is it going to have, what duration is it going to have, um, 
I'd like to say, since they haven't noted anything special about it, to my knowledge at least, it's probably going to be a copy-paste of the consumable that the submarines get right now. That's probably going to change in the future, I would imagine, since you have more ships out there that are going to be utilizing this um, consumable. I do find it interesting they're giving it to the Zhao branch. That's such an old branch in the game to be getting an update this long into the game's life. But hey, you know... It might get more people playing the Japanese heavy cruisers or the Japanese light cruiser, cruisers like the Yodo. I quite like the Japanese light cruisers, but apparently they're not that big of a hit with the community. But hey, now you got more reason to play them. Venezia, been a popular cruiser since it's been released, so there you go for it. All right, so let's continue on. They say as well, a collision warning message will now appear for submerged submarines when there's another submarine uh, underwater within two kilometers. The message will appear even if the enemy submarine is not spotted, and it will disappear as soon as the opponent leaves the two-kilometer radius or resurfaces. So that means that, you know, if somebody's about to hit each other, they'll be notified. Still can't see each other. There's still no assured detection, but, um, yeah, you know someone's there at least. I don't really see why submarines get special treatment in terms of the assured detection range. I've mentioned this beforehand. If you oopsie doopsie into one another, let each other be spotted and, you know, just, just fight it out like men, right? But, all right. So, um, that is pretty much it for the submarine and ASW changes. Again, not a whole lot, but definitely enough to tilt the scales, I think, back in the favor of the surface ships. And definitely help with a lot of the interaction that's been happening between the two. Other things that I do think need to be addressed going forward. The speed of periscope death is kind of stupid. I don't get why most of the submarines can still rock and roll at their surface speed when they're at periscope depth. I mean, because, like, that just doesn't make any sense. And that's what really enables a lot of the shotgunning that we see happening in the game. Because if I can rock and roll at my surface speed in the Gato, at the periscope depth, well, I have, like, a 2.5 kilometer detection range. I can close that distance in from myself and the, and the target ship quite fast. Whereas if you have, like, the 18 or the 19 kilometer top speed, once you, you know, fully surface applied at periscope depth, that greatly limits the ability of the ship to do that, right? So I think that's a big thing going forward. And as well, the little hydrophone effect that appears above the ship when it pings, it's nowhere near accurate enough to get a good drop on the submarine. Granted, with again, some of these changes with the hydrophone being given to the, I'm sorry, submarine surveillance being given to uh, these three cruiser branches to start out, it's a good step forward. But we'll see going forward. But those are my couple of my main issues going forward. Oh, and the pings being just, you know, completely crazy, right? The ability for submarines to just ping to their heart's content and with how inaccurate that hydrophone um, icon is, you can just keep pinging and it almost like doesn't really matter too much in a lot of cases. But again, we'll see going forward with these changes. I think, again, exit step forward. We'll see what happens from here on out. But yeah. All right. So there are changes coming to the exterior system when it comes to the camouflages. They say, starting with update 13.1, the majority of expendable camouflage available in the game will get their permanent versions. The new permanent camouflage will function similarly to those that already exist, such as the New Year, uh, the New Year Epoch, or Made of Steel. However, you will be able to mount them on any ship of any tier. These camouflages can be either purchased or earned through various activities, events, and missions. Available permanent camouflage are stored in your inventory. You can also see the number of copies you have under the exterior tab. You can link perma camouflages to ships for free, provided that you have them. Once you link a permanent camouflage to a ship, it will remain linked to that ship and cannot be unlinked. Once you link the permanent camouflage, you will no longer be able to use the expendable version of the same camouflage on that ship. You can't sell these permanent camouflages. Once you obtain a standard single color abstract or thematic camouflage, expendable or permanent, on your account, you can purchase its permanent versions for all your ships. You can purchase permanent standard single color abstract or thematic camouflage for credits or doubloons when purchasing a permanent camouflage under the exterior tab will automatically be linked to the ship. Camouflages in awarded and guest categories, for example, camouflages for, for participating in rank battles, or camouflages from collaborations can't be purchased on the exterior tab. You find the prices in the table below. TLDR, you can buy perma camos now for pretty much every camo in the game. There isn't a uh, awarded camo, again, for ranked or, you know, clan battles or whatever, or collaborations, right? So if you really like a, a temporary camo, you can buy it now and you can get a permanent version. Um, because camos don't really matter anymore. I guess they figure they can make more money off of us by just selling us the temporary camos outright. So, yeah. 
They also note the introduction of these permanent camouflages brings several other changes. Daily rewards in the barge will change. There would no longer be an option to choose the more camouflage container as a reward. Expendable camos will be replaced by their permanent versions in collections and campaigns, as well as for account leveling and clan battles and mission rewards. In the future, we plan to substitute expendable camouflage for their permanent versions for some activities. So, to me, this means like they're going to slowly start phasing out you know, temporary camos, and it's going to be kind of like, well, you're just going to get the permanent one for doing certain things in game, or just having to outright buy it. Because again, camos don't matter anymore in game, because there's no, you know, tactical advantage given to them. Or economical advantage as well. Alright, Lunar New Year. You can participate in the thematic event pass and journey through two progression lines that offer a plethora of rewards. Each line is, compri is comprised of a total of 20 levels, Complete them all to, to earn all the main rewards and gain access to additional rewards for completing extra levels. The first progression line will reward you with Lunar Warrior Permanent Camouflages, more Signals Containers, Lunar New Year Containers, and Journey to the West Premium Containers. Among the rewards, you'll be able to find the Tier 6 um, Tekaline Pan-Asian Cruiser Ramat with an economic bonus package for Tier 6 ships. The line also offers content made in collaboration with YouTuber and Twitch streamer The Russian Badger. The claustrophobic commemorative flag commander The Russian Badger with an individual voiceover and the USS Lobsterminator permanent camouflage for New Mexico. Extra levels of this line will reward you with two of the Lunar New Year containers per level. The second progression line, unlockable for doubloons, will provide the following rewards. The New Year uh, Beast Flag, Sha Wujing, Sun Wukong, and Chinese Dragon Patches. Lunar Warrior and Winter Strands Permanent Camouflage, and the Tier 8 Pan-Asian Destroyer Hisiang, with a Necronite Bonus Package for Tier 8 ships. Moreover, you will have an opportunity to earn Silk Sunrise Permanent Camos for the Chumfang, the Harbin, the Shejong, and the Dalian as well as Commanders Quan Wong with 10 skill points. Extra levels of this line will reward you with one Lunar New Year Warrior Permanent Camouflage per level. And it goes on to say, as part of the Lunar New Year celebrations, the New Year Beast Patch, Lunar Demon per Permanent Camouflage for the Hishyang, and Commander Neon with an individual voiceover have been added to the game. Okay, so this camouflage for the Hishyang looks pretty good, not gonna lie, it's pretty hot. Alright, I'm down with that. And, of course, they've updated the Dragon Port for Lunar New Year's. All right, so Lunar New Year's is kicking off, you know. Again, as with most of the events, play what you can. Get the free rewards. Don't get suckered into spending too much money into these events, right? All right, Airship Escort is returning as a temporary battle type. The mode, I thought, should never get removed from random battles because it was kind of fun. But, hey, it's back now. You can go into it with your favorite ships. Geared forward, I guess that was the main complaint. Well, I don't guess that was the main complaint. That was the main complaint about it, but hey, you can play it as you wish now. So, uh, it starts on February 22nd. However, does not start right away with the update and runs through March 5th. So they say, Airship Escort returns as a separate temporary battle type in the third week of update 13.1. 12v12, tier 8 to tier 10 ships, no super ships. All ship types, though. Your goal is to help the Allied airship to reach its destination. Well, yeah, yeah, we know how it works, yeah. It's back. I'm happy about that. So yeah, of course the uh, U.S. carriers early access early access event is continuing. They're going to milk us for everything we're worth out of that. But more importantly, in the armory, a ship I've been waiting for is popping up, and that is the Cecilia. So the Cecilia is coming in the armory for sixty thousand <laughs> research bureau points. My poor Harugamo is going to have to be reset again and again and again. I just went through a bunch of that with the uh, Kitakami event. But yeah, it's here for 60,000 Research Bureau points. So if you didn't cash in on the two times reset, uh, I think, what was it, um, late January or like, is it kind of soon? Yeah, if you haven't uh, cashed in on the quarter one, uh, research Bureau Reset, you can still do that and potentially get the ship at a bit of a discount. So, what's important about the Cecilia is that she's armed with 16 381mm guns and quad turrets like the Colombo. However, she has HE shells in her main gun instead of SAP and relies on her AP shells in the main gun just to do damage. But, the secondary guns have good firing range and they fire SAP shells with high penetration. If you look at the picture of the Cecilia on screen, you'll notice that she does have the American 127mm guns that fire SAP rounds. So that means, yeah, 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 SAP secondary Italian ship with big SAP 
round. So I'm very excited for Cecilia. In fact, probably after I get done with this video, I'm going to go reset my Harugama line five or six times to get this thing because I have been so hyped for this ship. I've been waiting for her for so long, ever since that original dev blog. So glad to see she is coming out. And um, some other things that are interesting is that we're getting a creator crossover event with people that don't really play the game. But I guess, hey, marketing is marketing, right? Saw so a lot of comments about, hey, about, hey, why don't you get, you know, creators that actually, you know, make content on the game for this. But I mean, from a marketing side of things, of course, you know, they want to get popular streamers and YouTubers to get pushing the game. So they've literally, you know, added five of them into the game, apparently. So, um, the five they have been at, uh, have been added to the game are, uh, shoot, where are they? There they are. So, Courage, Moist Critical, Ludwig, Nade Shot, Sapnap. I've heard of one of these five dudes, and that's only Moist Critical, so, okay. But cool, you know, whatever, they're in the game as their commanders, they voice them, uh, they provide the voiceover for their commanders, so, you know, hey, that's cool and all. So, that is happening, but... All right, so those are the major uh, highlights of the update. Um, of course, there is a whole host of additional changes and such that are coming this update. Um, that big list of buffs that we went over uh, last week that is coming out as well as update. So the Kabarosk is finally getting some love after quite some time. So you're probably going to run into me quite a bit running with the Kabarosk now that she has finally been buffed after so many years of being just nerfed into the dirt. So there is that. But again, if you want to read the full article and get a day of premium time, make sure to check that out via the link down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday and enjoy update 13.1. I'll catch you guys in there when I get home from work and get to try it out for myself. So hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday, wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.